Welcome back to Barnsley Music. My name is Barney, a classical composer and founder and director of Barnsley Music. In today's episode of live music, I'm going to perform music that you've already heard before, as well as music you've never heard for, before. But the music that you've already heard before will hopefully be better played. <laughs> I was a little bit unhappy with my last performance, so I've been working on some of the details and musicality, so I hope you really appreciate it. Let's begin. So what you just heard is from my opera ballet called Salambo, and that's from the very beginning of the very last act, and that scene was called The Floods of Vengeance. So basically, um, Carthage, who is the main superpower, okay, and they've gone to war with a smaller superpower that tried to attack them, they do an evil, evil act. The whole city participates in it. It's deeply, deeply immoral. And because they did this evil, evil act, the gods, in particular, Malach, who is one of the gods in the Baal religion, um, listens to their pleas and showers the city with rain because they haven't had rain for a very long time. I now like to play an excerpt from Help Us on the Way for Orchestra. It's my first orchestral work. It's in five movements or adventures, and we're going to hear the beginning of The Great Elephants. Hope you enjoy.
Uh, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so I do want to do one of those parts real quick in front of you. So that was from Help Us on the Way for Orchestra. It's the third movement, The Great Elephants. And this scene is kind of like, I described it in one of my videos as an acid trip. (laughs) Because it's just like reality, it's just not what it seems, something bizarre is happening. Um, I want to play... I'm going to play really slowly one of the sections. I'm still working on the speed because, again, this is for orchestra, so you got to <laughs> bear with me. I'm going to play really slowly just so you can hear how beautiful it is. Now it has to be twice as fast. <laughs> I hope you can use your imagination here and just see the potential, okay? And again, this is for orchestra, so it's a lot easier if everyone's playing their own instruments than me trying to do them all. Uh, I want to play one other thing from this that I already played. Um, This is the worried section. Listen carefully. Did you hear that change? Listen for that shift. Now listen with the melody on top. beautiful (laughs) and one other thing I want to show you listen carefully to the opening of this section so our attention is distracted by what's the melody But listen to the life in the accompaniment. I don't know if you could perceive that on a recording, but there's a beautiful life. What I really like about that is that kind of happened naturally, and I think that's partly thanks to my studies in France five years, just really learning harmony, that even like the background, there's just so much life. And when you hear this for orchestra, it's even greater. I'd now like to play some music from Salambo, which is an opera ballet that I'm currently composing. Hope you enjoy.
And so that's where the singing comes in. So let me just play that very ending and then I'll try to improvise like what you said and I'll explain. Basically, um, the singer that will come in will say, wait, wait, listen up. So what's going on in this music? Well, so we have Guisson, who is a military general for Carthage, which is the superpower. Okay. And we have this group of rebels called the Barbares, who worked for Carthage. And, you know, they lost a lot of members and fought the wars for Carthage, but Carthage did nothing for them. So they start to rebel. And then Guisson, who is a military general for Carthage, is charged to go over to them and, you know, give them money and pay out their debts, okay? And Guisson is an interesting character because though he is part of kind of the um, establishment, I do feel sorry for him because his intention is in the right place. He does want to do the right thing. I'm now going to play a little bit more from Salambo, which is, of course, my opera ballet. I'm going to play from the very opening. I consider this theme is going to weave the whole uh, work together. I see it as like a magical theme.
So that is the prelude to Salambo. And of course, the main theme that we heard was this. And so that theme is going to be weaved throughout the entire opera. And I actually see every instrument is going to play, every instrument. And even the singers will play it. But it would be really cool if just one instrument never plays it. I think that'd be very interesting. And this theme actually really calms me down. Like sometimes when I'm thinking about anxiety, I just start singing like, And it's truly a magical theme. Like I, I sang it one time in my house because I'm feeling so anxious. And I'm just like, I feel like there's an evil spirit in the house. You know, like crazy, right? So I started singing and singing is really helpful for that. And try singing that melody. Tell me how it goes. I'm going to play some more so, so Salambo against my opera ballet, and this is a scene I love so, so, so much. And again, I hope that one day I do have a budget so I can produce Salambo. That's what I want. I wouldn't trust anyone to produce it for me. I need to find a way to make the income so I can, you know, hire the dancers, hire the orchestra, well, create the orchestra, and pay, of course, royalty wages so people can really be paid very well to do this level of art. So we'll see how I fare.
So this beautiful excerpt, I absolutely love playing it. Actually, one of the things I have to start doing is not put so much of myself into it because I get so emotional as I play this. So again, this is from Salambo. It's my opera ballet. It's in the first act. And it starts off where the barbares, which are the underdogs, okay, this is before they go to war with Carthage. They are brought into Carthage to celebrate like some military victory because they were hired by Carthage to fight for Carthage because Carthage doesn't have enough soldiers. But as they're kind of getting drunk and enjoying the festivities, they start to remember some of the injustices of Carthage. Yeah, Carthage promised us money. They promised us this and that. And so it starts to get boisterous. And something they do, which I think is so beautiful, is they free the slaves. Okay. Now, I don't think it came from like, oh, this is a moral injustice. I think it's a little bit of that, but it was kind of to, to mess with Carthage because this is a time in history. This is the BC era where slavery was just, you know, it was weaved in society. It was much different from how we conceive of slavery now. And so they free the slaves. And so that's why in this story, um, it's hard to take sides because each side is so evil. I mean, the evil that's committed uh, in this story is, is unfathomable. But I do have a soft spot for the underdogs, the barbarians, because they did free the slaves. And I think there's always um, a place in history for any group that frees people from captivity. So what we heard was Spendius, who was a Greek man who was imprisoned, and or actually made a slave. He's liberated, and then he comes out, and he looks around, but because he's been enslaved for so long, he is still looking for a master. He's not used to being free, and no one wants him. So, you know, eventually what happens is he becomes a military general, and he agitates the barbarians to go to war. So he comes quite powerful. And the very ending was when the barbarians start, you know, going crazy. They start like throwing things around and burning down the city. So let me just play, um, I call it Le Chant de Spendius, which would be the song of Spendius. It's when he first gets liberated, his liberation. Do you hear how beautiful it is? I especially like this one particular chord change. I'm going to play that again just so you can really appreciate this, how tender and how beautiful this is. And I also love this last part that goes. It just is so tender, so beautiful. So you're not supposed to have favorites when you're a composer. It's like it's all like you see from the totality. But this part I really, really, really love. And I hope you do too. So we have to find a way. I don't know how I'm going to find the money to create this opera ballet. Because again, I would not trust any opera company or ballet company to implement the vision to do it the way that I see that it has to be done. So my goal is to just find a way to, to make it. I don't know how, but hopefully there is a way.
I'd now like to play some music from Paradise Lost. So Paradise Lost, of course, is a very epic poem by John Milton written in the 1600s that talks about man's fall from grace. It's based on the story from the Bible of Adam and Eve. And I'm now going to set it as an oratorio. Okay, So think of an oratorio as like an opera that's a bit too religious or too spiritual or philosophical to have staging and the acting and all that. So the drama has kind of been lowered so we can focus on the esoteric. And I did a whole video explaining what is an oratorio, so go ahead and check that out. Check that out. Now, I don't know how much we were able to stand in my diction because I'm not professionally trained as a singer, but I was just playing the very opening of Paradise Lost and the first music, the first choral music that's been written for the very opening and the, the lines of this poem. This is an actual, the original poem, the first lines, the epic lines are, of man's first disobedience and the fruit of that forbidden tree. Okay, and that's how it's going to start. That's how Paradise Lost the Oratorio is going to start. Of course, there'll be a full chorus, you know, and there'll be professional singers and all that, but that's how it's going to start. i like to end with music never heard before. Hope you enjoy.
Have a wonderful day.